<laughs> you feel like a news reporter? I do. <laughs> Maybe like Oprah. So, your name, for the record? Robert J. Colombo, Jr. Okay. And how long have you been on the bench? Uh, at the end of the year, it'll be 36 years. How long have you served as chief judge? At the end of the year, it'll be five years. So I'm going to take you back a little bit. Who would you say are your role models and your heroes? My role models. Well, I always thought that uh, Justice, also known as Judge James Ryan, was a great judge. He served on the Wayne County Circuit Court, the Michigan Supreme Court, and the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. I always found that his uh, opinions were very well written and well reasoned. I uh, had great admiration for some of the colleagues that I served with. I thought Judge William Giovanni was an excellent judge had a particularly great knowledge of the rules of evidence. I would often talk to him when I had difficult evidentiary issues to get his take on things. One of my all-time favorite judge, judges was the late Susan Beakey Nielsen. She was extremely smart, very helpful to everyone, and uh, was even nicer than she was a quality judge. Uh, I was so pleased when she got appointed to the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals and so sad when she died shortly after her appointment. I've served with a lot of really great judges, hard workers, very intelligent, tried to do the best they could every day. It's hard to pick out one or some of the judges, uh, but I've mentioned a few that had an impact on me. And the last I would like to mention is my father uh, and my father-in-law. Uh, my father was a Detroit Recorders Court judge for nine years and a Wayne County Circuit Court judge for nine years, and uh, he gave me a lot of guidance in terms of uh, things that I should do and not do as a judge. My father-in-law, Joseph A. Sullivan, was the chief judge of this court uh, in the 60s and the 70s, and perhaps the best advice he ever gave me was, judges should never get angry. They hold all the cards. So both of them had a significant impact upon me. Was there anything in particular your father had given you as far as advice? Well, I think the most important thing my father taught me were, there were two things. One, work ethic. Come to work every day and do your job. And two, try to do it with a charitable spirit. And uh, I think those were the two most important things that my father taught me. So you've heard a lot of cases over the last 30 plus years. What's the most memorable case? Well, there have been a number of them. Certainly on the civil side, trying Dow Corning's lawsuit against its insurance companies over the breast implant coverage was a very difficult, time-consuming, and complex case. Uh, it certainly presented a lot of challenges It was a very lengthy case. It was about four months trial, three and a half months of it a jury trial. The last two weeks bench issues I had to resolve. I would also say that trying the Lawrence Delisle criminal case, uh, that's the case where he drove into the Detroit River down in Wyandotte with his wife and four children, and the children drowned, was a difficult case because of its notoriety until the Bob Bashir case. That was probably the most publicized case uh, 
in the history of the court while I had been on the court. And uh, it presented all kinds of issues, particularly with respect to selecting the jury. I ended up suppressing a statement he made during the course of a polygraph interview. So there were some significant issues in that case. And certainly it was very heart rendering to hear the testimony of the divers when they retrieved the bodies from the Detroit River. It was a tough case and a sad case for me to try. So let's switch over to some happy moments. What's been your most happy moment at the court? You know, I've really enjoyed being the chief judge. I think that uh, with uh, the help of Zanel Brown, the court administrator, and uh, the management team, and the presiding judges, and the judges themselves, and a lot of the employees of the court, we have made some significant improvements in the court over the last five years. Uh, the fact that I got out of the silo of just being a trial judge and uh, got to meet and know all the people who work in the court. Uh, it's amazing how many people I did not know even though I had been here for 31 years. So to be able to be in the different buildings, in the different divisions, in the front of the court, and get to know a lot of the people who make things happen at the court has been a great experience for me and something I will always remember. Lifelong Detroiter, where, where did you go to school? Yes, uh, I didn't live all my life in Detroit, but most of it growing up. I started out over in the northwest side, went to kindergarten uh, in the Six Mile of Schaefer area, a school called King. Then first and second grade over at Precious Blood, where I had the IHM nuns. Our family then moved out to Farmington in 1958. And I attended Kenbrook Elementary School from third through sixth grade and O.E. Dunkel Junior High School for seventh and eighth grade. Uh, ninth and tenth grade, I attended Brother Rice High School. And in 1966, my father decided to run for Detroit Recorders Court, and we had to live in the city of Detroit. So we moved back into the city, which I consider a very important thing that happened in my life. Because uh, when we came back to Detroit, I really learned about what the real world was about and became street smart in terms of what was happening on the streets. I transferred to Catholic Central High School. I was in Detroit and experienced firsthand the 1967 race riots and watched as uh, businesses in my neighborhood were burned. We could watch the fire from the back of our house it was a real scary experience for me and certainly a wake-up call that things needed to change in our community and in our country. I then went to the University of Miami in Florida. I like to tell people that I majored in sun tanning and minored in tan maintenance, but it's not really true. <laughs> I was an accounting major, graduated cum laude from the school. One of the best experiences during that was I was a resident advisor in the dorm my junior and senior year. Uh, I then went to Detroit College of Law for law school, put myself through law school, part of the time working on the assembly line out at uh, the Wixom plant, building Ford cars. The last two years of law school, I clerked for a law firm called Jenkins, Fortescue, Miller, and Nystrom. Uh, and uh, allowed me to make the money I needed to pay for law school. So at what point did you decide you wanted to be a lawyer? Did you always know that? I always wanted to be a lawyer. I come from a very successful family of lawyers. My grandfather, Amo Colombo, and his two brothers had a very successful law firm in Detroit, the Colombo, Colombo, and Colombo Law Firm. Uh, they represented a lot of notable clients, including for 12 years from 1928 to 1940, Henry Ford and the Ford Motor Company. They also were involved in very many notorious and high publicized criminal cases. Uh, my father was a very successful criminal defense attorney. And uh, 
My favorite TV show growing up was Perry Mason. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think all those things had an impact on me, and I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. What are your hobbies? Uh, I like to go out with my wife to dinner and movies. Uh, I like to play golf, although I haven't played as much lately. I like to work in our yard, cut the grass, garden. Uh, I actually enjoy doing household chores. I'm not very good at fixing things, but uh, I can uh, vacuum and wash the windows and clean the bathrooms and do a lot of those chores, keep the house up. And I actually en enjoy doing those things. What's the latest movie you saw? Let's see. Um, the last one I think I saw was the documentary on Mr. Rogers. I thought it was a great movie and uh, it, it showed how Mr. Rogers tried to get his, me his message out of love and treating people right and equal to all the children who watched his show and I was pretty amazed at uh, how subtle these messages were but how strong they were. What words of wisdom would you have for students? Do the, th the thing you least like first. <laughs> that was always uh, some good advice I got from uh, Wallace D. Riley when I worked at his law firm. What about for future judges or attorneys? Uh, I would say for judges, it's important to be on time, to have a good judicial demeanor, and to timely make decisions. For lawyers, I would say be prepared, know the facts of your case, know the applicable law, and be willing to discuss it with the judge and opposing counsel, just as you would have a regular conversation on any issue. Words of wisdom for court leadership. I think court leadership always has to keep learning. Uh, trying to um, find out what's new, uh, what are better ways to do things, uh, keep being innovative, uh, try to make the court environment good for everyone who uses it, the employees, the attorneys, the parties, our stakeholders and partners. I think we always have to keep all of them in mind when we are trying to figure out what is the best way to serve the public and the people we work with. So what is there something you would like to share that maybe I haven't asked yet? Um, Something that I've become involved in the last few years that I've really enjoyed, and that's uh, been mentoring some young African-American males. One is uh, Joe Farian, who is uh, one of the most amazing young men I've ever met in my life. He's from Liberia. He graduated from Martin Luther King Jr. Senior High School two years ago at 16 years of age. He's at Michigan State University in a pre-med program and has a 4.0 average. He's a resident advisor and has been a resident advisor last year and this year. And uh, I enjoy our conversations every week. The other is Cortez Brown, who came to me from Cristo Rey High School. And 
and uh, he's got a great personality. He's a very hard worker, very motivated to succeed. And uh, I've had a lot of fun talking with and doing things with Cortez, like participating in court functions, going out to dinner with him and his family, attending his graduation, uh, and also his graduation party. So I've gotten a, a lot of joy out of those relationships. Is there anything else? Uh, I guess my two sons, both of them uh, I'm very proud of, uh, and my wife. You know, my wife is a very successful lawyer, workers' comp magistrate. Uh, and my two sons uh, have done well, both college graduates. Uh, one uh, has a band that's starting to have some su success. The other one works in New York selling shoes, uh, but is trying to break into public radio. So I'm very proud of both those boys. Well, thank you very, very much for the interview. And congratulations on your retirement. And thank you for all that you've done for the course. Thank you.